Hello everyone and welcome to our look at the final episode of Prehistoric Planet. I want to try to keep this short, highlighting only certain specific moments in this episode, because with this being the final episode of the series, a lot of my thoughts are more fitting for my full series review, which is coming in a couple of days. Just like with the previous episodes, we have a wide array of species and they all have really interesting behaviors. I think one of the dinosaurs in this, in this episode probably has my favorite behavior across the entire series and I think you can already guess which but we'll get to that when we'll get to that. The first dinosaur that I want to mention is the Triceratops. I won't be going through all of them. We see quite a few dinosaurs sprinkled in that I won't specifically mention in this video. Again, short and sweet. Uh, the Triceratops have this really interesting scene where, you know, they're, they're grazing in the forest but some of the plants are actually toxic. So they have to go into a cave where they like eat this deposit of clay that lines their stomach with that clay to protect them against those toxins. We've seen shots of this in the trailers. We've seen a pretty extensive clip of this cave journey on the Apple TV Plus YouTube channel as well. And as we know, one of the baby Triceratops gets left behind in the dark cave as the herd moves through. And it ends with this really eerie shot of just the baby in the dark, unable to see and calling out for, for its family, essentially. It's really dark of me to say, but I kind of would have preferred it if this baby Triceratops story had ended just like that with the unknown of how how it's going to meet its demise. But the baby actually ends up being fine. It makes its triumphant return, kind of similar to how the Allura Titan in the previous episode survived. And as much as I love that Allura Titan survival and as much as the baby murder of the first few episodes hurt my soul, I do think that this final episode has many opportunities for drama, for emotional scenes, and they sort of back away from that. Which doesn't really match with, like I said, what we saw in earlier episodes of the series, where they definitely didn't pull any punches. But from a storytelling perspective, it also feels contradictory that the finale of the series is the most lighthearted. And what felt like the show building up to something doesn't quite deliver. Previous episodes have given us a lot more drama, a lot more action, a lot more emotion than the finale episode. And there's something just kinda anticlimactic about that. From a slight negative to a definite positive, throughout this series I have praised the CGI, but specifically in this forest episode, I was really blown away by it. Maybe it's something about the lighting of this episode which lended itself better for the CGI renders, but some of the shots honestly made me feel like I was looking at an animatronic, I would say. I mean, obviously I knew that I wasn't looking at an actual dinosaur, but it really made me feel like I was looking at a practical effect with how perfect the lighting was and how detailed everything was. Now for what I think is my favorite behavior showcased in this entire series, we're gonna be looking at the Carnotaurus. We saw a hint of this in the trailers. You already know what I'm gonna be talking about. The blue arms, it's absolutely amazing. So what the Carnotaurus is doing is it's clearing like this patch of the forest to make this his stage for a mating ritual. And this is in clear reference to one of my favorite animal documentary moments ever of a bird of paradise neatly cleaning up the forest also to impress the females. When his stage is ready, the Carnotaurus calls out and this female comes trotting over, waiting to be impressed. And what happens next is a joy to behold. And I will be watching this over and over and over again because it made me, it made me laugh so much. It was so fun to see. But the Carnotaurus does this quite elaborate dance for her, you know, moving up and down, like bobbing, uh, spinning around, doing pretty little pirouettes and of course the grand finale is flapping his teeny tiny blue arms and it was absolutely amazing the music especially sells the humor of it and the light tone of it it was absolute perfection one of the funniest things is that at the end of that entire display and they show they show it for a pretty long time and I'm glad they did. I enjoyed every second of it. But at the end of that entire display, what's really funny is that the female is like, 
yeah, not impressed. And she just walks off. <laughs> and it's not framed particularly sad. Of course, I feel bad for this male Carnotaurus, but it's, it's more framed like, oh, well, next time, hopefully we'll be better. And he just continues cleaning up his little patch of forest. The appearance of the Caretha Raptors in this episode was another highlight for me, purely because of how colorful they are. I kind of wish we had seen more of that. Not necessarily the best camouflage, as is indicated in this episode, and is being hunted by the Changju Saurus, which I thought was a, a really fun appearance because I was only introduced to that species recently through Jurassic World Evolution 2. I won't be going through like this entire scene as I won't be going through this entire episode, but I want to highlight two things in this scene. And one is just an example of the attention to detail that this show puts into every single thing. Because what I noticed as the Changju Saurus is like honing in and just before she is about to leap towards them, you see her eyes dilating. And I thought that was really cool. And that's just one instance of many throughout the series where I notice little details like that. And it's really that attention to detail that brings it to life. And the other thing I want to highlight, something that has also been prevalent throughout the show, is that the kill shot, quote unquote, the moment the dinosaur makes the kill, is censored. In this instance, it is obstructed by something else in frame in a very Jurassic Park kind of way. Throughout the show, the dominant way they sort of censor these violent moments is by having the camera pulled back so far that you don't really see the gruesomeness of what is happening. I will be getting into this more in my full series review, but I hadn't made a note of it yet in my previous episode recaps, even though I did notice every time, and this was the perfect moment to address it. We have another forest fire, just like in the previous episode, but I feel like it's basically negligible in how short it is shown. It's also, again, shown in quite a positive light, just like the previous episode. The episode doesn't really utilize the drama of it, it doesn't really show the danger of it. We get a shot of a mama at Montosaurus leading her babies away from the fire, but that's really it. Both her and her babies survive, and the aftermath of the forest fire is also framed as a positive. For example, by showing the atrocity raptor use the ashes as an insecticide for his feathery coat. And speaking of atrocity raptor, how interesting is it that we get the atrocity raptor in Jurassic World Dominion, and this very different and obviously more scientifically accurate representation of it in Prehistoric Planet. As we transition into a nighttime scene, we get a glimpse of the bioluminescence, which I thought is really cool. I always love seeing that. And I was actually happy to see that we are getting a proper nighttime scene. We haven't seen that before in the series. We've, saw, we've seen it with the ammonites, but that was underwater. I felt like that was very different. So I'm glad that we got that in this episode. My only downside with it is that this nighttime scene is when we get the Therizinosaurus, which is a dinosaur that I'm super, super, super excited for. Again, also something we will be seeing in Jurassic World Dominion. So even though the moonlight does a lot to illuminate the babies, which are absolutely adorable, it was just a minor letdown that the adult Therizinosaurus, which I was glad to see, I thought initially that maybe we would only see the babies, but we only see it like shrouded in darkness and sort of like silhouetted by the moonlight. So we don't really see a lot of her. And I thought that was just like... I'm nitpicking maybe at this point, but I would have loved to see her in like broad daylight. The episode and the series overall ends with the Hatsik Opteryx, that's a very difficult name for me. Uh, this uh, flying reptile takes us out of the forest and sort of onto the coast where it can where it can finally stretch out its wings. Not entirely sure why the rest of this beach scene wasn't just included in the coastal episode where it would have fit in just as well, possibly better. And the Hatsik Opteryx just flies off, it flies into the distance. And that is the ending shot of the episode and the series. In his narration, David Attenborough is saying that it is flying towards an even better forest for, for living in. But we don't actually see that, so perhaps this is a hint at a second season coming. The end didn't really give a conclusion. Instead, I felt like it really hinted at more coming. So I do really hope that that is indeed a sign that we could expect a second season if the series does well enough, which I definitely hope that it does. 
And I've chatted on again for way too long, so I'm gonna end the episode right here. I hope that you'll share your own thoughts about the series or this particular episode in a comment down below. And I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around for the full series review that I'll be working on and that will be coming in the next couple of days where I will be giving a proper review, not a recap as I've been doing throughout the, throughout the week, but a proper review of all of the aspects of the show and to give, of course, my rating and my ranking of the episodes. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy prehistoric planets. <laughs>